Hey everybody, it's Edie, and I'm here with a really cool new product that I want to try. And this is going to be a kind of combined post. Um, it's something I've never used before, and I wanted to record the process and kind of see how it goes. Um, I'm, you'll notice that I have just a pot here with what looks like honey <laughs> on the stove, uh, but it's not honey. It's this really great product that I've heard a lot about and that I've had for a while and just haven't been able to try and it's called composite mold. And I want to try to make a mold with my composite mold and then use some creative paper clay to make this thing that's so awesome. I can't wait to show you. Okay, so a little bit about the composite mold. Uh, it's, it's a make it yourself mold compound and it's microwavable and you melt the composite mold and then you pour it over whatever you want to mold and let it firm up. Then once it's firm, you remove the original and then you've got your mold that you can cast your items in. And uh, I'm going to actually be comparing this to Amazing Mold Putty as I use it because I've used the Amazing Mold Putty quite a bit and I know how it works and um, I know how easy it is and I know kind of how I need to work with it. This composite mold I've never used before, so I don't know what to expect. I know some other people that have used the composite mold and the results that they've gotten, but they all use the microwave. I don't have a microwave. I don't even own one. So I have to use the stove top, and I'm trying to melt the composite mold in some water. And I was told that the slower it melts, the better it is. So I have my stove set on about medium and I am heating the composite mold uh, on a medium heat stove and what I have is the, the, the container of composite mold is plastic. So I have this plastic container sitting in a pot of water here on my stove and I'm not sure how long it's going to take to melt so I'm just going to let it sit here and I'm timing it. It's already been in for about three or four minutes now and uh, actually about five minutes now and I'm just gonna let it go and see how long it takes to melt then once it's melted I want to try and mold this I have this great pot holder and it's got like this honeycomb can you see that see how it's like it's so squishy and it's got this great honeycomb texture to it and uh, the little designs here are pliable so they bend and this is not really great for amazing mold putty because when you try to press into it, the little um, octagons or whatever those are, polygon, they're uh, six-sided. <laughs> I don't know how many that is. Anyway, so the little things, they, they bend, so I can't really get a good impression. And even when you just try to press paper clay and things like that into this, you don't get a really good impression. So what I'm hoping is that the composite mold, as I pour it, will fill those holes without affecting the shape at all. And then I'll be able to pop my composite mold, you know, pop this out of the composite mold, then fill it with creative paper clay and get the honeycomb in the paper clay, which I haven't been able to do before. And I'm so super excited about this because I love this honeycomb. I absolutely love it. And I would really like to be able to add these honeycomb embellishments to different things that I create. But, you know, up until now, that just really hasn't happened. And then, if that works, then I hope to be able to create a stamp and all kinds of good stuff out of this by using the composite mold. So I'm just going to let this sit. And then I'll be back once this is good and melted to pour it into my... And this is a pot holder, by the way. It was like 350 or something like that. And uh, it's just really inexpensive pot holder. But, you know, it's it's got to be oven safe, or, you know, not necessarily oven safe, but heat safe. So I'm hoping that the composite mold isn't going to melt this. But we're going to try it and see how it goes, and I'll be back whenever this is ready to pour. All right, I'm in about 41 minutes, and you can see I've got this egg yolk-sized piece left. But the rest of my composite mold is pretty much melted. It's nice and stirrable now. It is chock full of bubbles, though. 
I think it has something to do with the stirring, but it says to stir every minute, and because I'm doing the stove top, I, you know, I just don't know if, if, you know, maybe if it wasn't on the stove, if I wouldn't have to stir it, or maybe I shouldn't have stirred it, but I was going by the directions, and I've never used it before, so I'm doing exactly what the directions tell me, and it's just full of bubbles, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to work as far as my mold goes. I'm going to let it set for probably another five minutes or so. I do just want to check my water temperature one more time. But I think probably in about another five minutes or so it'll be good and we can actually pour the mold. Okay, my composite mold has been in the water for about 48 minutes now and it's completely melted. I gave it one good stir just to make sure that the little uh, ball was completely melted and then I let it set for probably another five minutes in the water to completely melt it down. So now I have... And I still have it in the water right now while I'm talking because I don't want it to start cooling before I'm, I'm ready for it. So I have a little disposable cake pan here. And I laid my pot holder in the bottom of the cake pan and then pressed it down to make sure it was nice and flat. You know these little disposable pans can get bubbles and bumps and all that good stuff in it. So I pressed my pot holder down so that it's nice and flat. And I also sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray. Uh, the composite mold suggests using a mold release. This is a pot holder. I don't know how mold release would work on that. So I sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray. And now what I want to do, I'm not going to make the full um, pot holder. That's just a bit too large for me. I know I would probably never use anything that large as an embellishment. Um, so, but I do still want this laying in the cake pan in case it does go over or if I get off the edge or something like that. So that's why I have it in the cake pan, not necessarily to catch any excess, but, um, I mean, just to catch excess, not because I'm going to make it this large. So now I'm going to take my composite mold and I'm going to get a nice, steady, thin stream here, get it going, and then just pour it all over my... Oven, I mean my uh, pot holder. You know, I may actually go ahead and make the whole thing, or pretty close. Pretty close. So I'm just pouring in a nice steady stream, a nice thin stream here, not letting it pull too much because it does spread. Oh, my pot handle. Oh, see, I just went over a little bit because I wasn't paying full attention. That's why I wanted this little cake pan here. And if I get any excess, it's okay. I'll just pull it off and put it back into... Oop, I just went over again. Um, I'll just pull it off and put it back into the container and remelt it and then reuse it. Because the composite mold can be reused over and over again. If I no longer want this mold or if it doesn't turn out right, then all I have to do, remelt it and report. Now, I poured a good blob on here to let it really spread out to make sure it's all nice and even. Got it on my thumb a little bit. Now I'm going to take my spoon and just, uh-oh, it's stuck. <laughs> I laid it on my <laughs> spoon rest and it's stuck. Okay, so I just want to scrape the edge, put it back into the container. There we go. Now, you can just let this set and dry room temperature, or you can put it in the refrigerator, which is what I'm going to do. Just put mine in the refrigerator. I'm going to sit this on the counter here and let it start cooling. Now this, I'm going to take and put in my refrigerator. It's full of bubbles. I'm just going to say that now. It is completely full of bubbles. Not sure how that's going to work out. I hope it doesn't affect my mold. But if it does, I'll just remelt it and pour it again. So it's not really that big of a deal. I'm going to pop this in the refrigerator and come test it probably in about an hour. And see how it does. Alright, my composite mold has been in the refrigerator for about mm, 45 minutes or so and I just wanted to come give it a test. I'm still seeing fingerprints on it but I don't know if that means it's not done. It looks like it's peeling out of my mold so I think I'm going to go ahead and peel it out. Oh my gosh that is so awesome! I think the bubbles might actually add to the effect on this particular project. For most projects I would say probably not so much. 
but for this, because it's honeycomb and it's supposed to look, you know, real, then I think it, the bubbles actually enhanced it, but you can see a lot of places where there were bubbles. I mean, it's full of bubbles. So that is my new mold. I think what I want to do now that it's unmolded is put it back in the refrigerator for another 30 minutes or so before I actually work with it because it still feels kind of sticky and I don't think it's supposed to feel sticky. I think, you know, when it's not sticky anymore, that means it's really done and ready to use. But um, I wanted to show you just a few things right here. Uh, I've got these excess little bits where I poured over the edge of my mold. I don't think there was any more stuck to the actual mold, no. Uh, but these little pieces here where it kind of went over the edge right there, I'm just going to pluck that off. It looks exactly like real honey out of a real honeycomb. I could actually use this right here. It's heavy, but I could use this right here as an embellishment. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. I'm so excited. So what I'm going to do is let my mold set for about another 30 minutes in the refrigerator, and then I'm going to play with some paper clay and see what kind of look I get putting my paper clay into my beehive mold. I'm so excited. I'll be back. <laughs> 